Welcome to Electron Online, and now that we understand Poisson's law and we saw the derivation, let's now calculate the discharge rate of the fluid coming through a pipe, understanding, of course, that the velocity of the fluid inside a pipe forms a parabolic shape, it kind of in three dimensions because it travels fast at the center and it would be zero near the edges. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, the discharge rate by definition is the amount of volume per unit time that comes through the pipe, and that, of course, is equal to the cross-sectional area of the pipe times the velocity. Of course, the velocity, according to Poisson's law, is equal to this. It's the difference in the pressure divided by four times the coefficient of viscosity times the length of the pipe, and then, of course, times r squared minus little r squared, r being the radius of the pipe, little r being any position inside the pipe from the center to the edge. Since we already have a dv dt, we don't want that in our equation, we're going to let q equal represent the discharge rate dv dt. <coughs> Excuse me. So then dq is going to be the discharge rate of just a small little sleeve of fluid coming through the pipe. At a, the sleeve is positioned at a distance r away from the pipe and it has a thickness of dr and it's the discharge rate of that sleeve we're going to call dq. And therefore, we can then say that dq is equal to the velocity times dA. So it would be the cross-sectional area of the small little sleeve of fluid coming through. And the dA, of course, would be equal to the circumference times the thickness. And V would come from this equation right here, which means that dq is going to be equal to the difference in the pressure, P2 minus P1, divided by 4 mu times L times, we still have R, oop, I need the big R first, right, the radius of the pipe squared first minus little r squared times dA, which is going to be 2 pi R times dr. All right. So that would be the discharge rate of just a small little amount. Now we want to have it for the entire pipe, so we're going to integrate from little r to big R. So that means that q is going to be the integral of dq going from r equal 0 to r equal r. Right? We're going to integrate over the entire uh, radius of the pipe. And that would be equal to, now let's see, what is a constant here? Notice that this whole thing is a constant, and then this multiply times that, so let's go ahead and do that. So we have uh, P2 minus P1 divided by 4 mu L, all that is a constant. Now we're going to integrate, and we multiply this through, oh, we also have a 2 pi here. Can't forget about the 2 pi, so let's bring the 2 pi over here, 2 pi. Now we can integrate, see what we have left. We have a, an R squared times r dr, and that would be minus, that would be um, an r cubed dr, like so. Okay, I broke it up into two integrals, so you can see what I'm doing. I'm multiplying the 2 pi comes over here, that's a constant. Then r times r squared is this, and r times little r squared is this, and minus is over here, and the limits are going to go from 0 to r, and from 0 to r. So we have two integrals to integrate. Here's the closing bracket. Okay, let's go ahead and do that and see what we get. <clears throat> so this is equal to uh, P2 minus P1. The 2 and the 4 cancel out, so we have a pi in the numerator, and we'll end up with 2 mu L in the denominator. And when we integrate this, we'll end up with an R squared, little r squared divided by 2, minus little r to the 4th power divided by 4, and then both will be evaluated from 0 to r. And notice when I plug in the lower limit, I get 0. When I plug in the upper limit, I get an interesting result. So this is equal to the difference in the pressure, P2 minus P1 times pi divided by 2 mu L. And then here, I'll end up with an r to the 4th over 2 minus r to the 4th over 4. And of course, if we then Simplify that. This is basically 2r to the 4th over 4 minus 1r to the 4th over 4, which is simply a single r to the 4th over 4. So let me come up here. We have a little bit more room. So that means that q, the total flow, flow rate or discharge rate, is equal to this constant right here, which is p2 minus p1 divided by 2 mu l 
multiplied times, and what I have over here would be r to the fourth over four. And notice that the four times the two will give me an eight in the denominator with an r fourth there. So finally, the discharge rate q is equal to the difference in the pressure divided by eight times the coefficient of viscosity times the length of the pipe times r to the fourth power. And that's the amount of fluid that will flow through the pipe depending upon the radius of the pipe, the length of the pipe, the coefficient of viscosity of the fluid in the pipe, and the difference of the pressure between that segment of the pipe. And that's how you find the discharge rate using Poisson's law and integrating over the entire diameter or radius of the pipe. Oh, I'm missing something. And I just noticed, I forgot, my pi. I dropped my pi over here. So I need a pi in there, and I have this pi, you got to have this pi, because without the pi, it would not be correct. So again, there's the equation, and the correct equation with the pi left in. That's how we do that.